What's up everybody, Mark here. Today we're gonna do a reaction video to Master P talking about financial advice and entrepreneurship, which is super cool. The hip hop industry has always fascinated me even since I was a little boy. And I remember listening to Master P, believe it or not, when I was a teenager. So this brings back some memories. Uh, this gentleman has been around since about 1989. Until now, he's still pretty relevant in the hip hop uh, industry as one of the godfathers of hip hop. His net worth is roughly $200 million. Aside from his rapping career, he is an entrepreneur and uh, somebody who creates businesses. He has a shoe company as well. He went from high end fashion to competing with Nike, Reebok, and the like. So, without further ado, guys, we're going to jump into this. This is a blind reaction. I have not watched this entire interview all the way through, but just the first few minutes that I did catch, I thought to myself, this would be pretty cool to hear this gentleman's financial advice and how it relates to us here now as the recording of this video in 2022. Let's check it out. <laughs> what advice would you give your, your younger self? Because you're successful. But yes, I think uh, don't be afraid to grow up. Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to do the right thing. And uh, in business, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, maybe you might need to cut off some people mm. that's not worth it for your business or bad wow. for your business, whether it's family members or friends. And I tell people all the time, you got to be able to sacrifice. All right. So there's actually quite a few things that I want to unpack there. Number one, he says, you have to be careful who around, who's around you, right? You know, who you surround yourself with, you're likely to become the average of those people. Some say five people, some say three people, but it's the people that you're rubbing shoulders with. That's where you're likely going to end up in life. And it, you know how it's easier to pull somebody down in life than it is to pull them up. Beware of who you surround yourself with. And even goes further on to say, be careful even if it's family. Even if it's family, still be careful. Sometimes you have to cut some ties. Sometimes you gotta love from a distance in order to get where you wanna get to in life. And also find stuff with a problem. So I always look for a business with a problem. That's actually really good. So that's number one of entrepreneurship on how to be a successful business owner is to provide a solution to somebody that has a problem, right? That's how that's how sales works. That's how um, that's how you make it big in the sales industry is by providing a service or providing a product that solves somebody's needs. So that's really really tremendous advice, right there. Even that little nugget will literally take somebody to the next level. Everybody wants a nice looking house. But the person that fixed the house is where the value come in at. Oh, that's it, good. He said the person that fixes the house, that's where the value comes in. That's a nugget worth writing down right there. Is, it, is there anyone out in the business world that you would take a master class from? Somebody you really admire? Uh, you know, Bill Gates. I, I would take it from Bill Gates. Um, Interesting. There's a lot of people out there, but what I respect about Bill Gates is he gives his money back to people. I know a lot of rich people that tell me, you know, they think they could take their money with them. So I met a guy the other day that told he was so rich. No, this guy was so rich. He was like, I said, well, what's your backup plan? You know, are you making an imprint on the world? And I said, uh, this guy told me, he said, yeah, but uh, I do have a backup plan. You know, I said, I said, what? He said, uh, I'm not going to die. I said, well, good luck. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, you're that rich. But, you know, when you look at you're going to die. Yeah. So, you know, it's about doing what's right, giving back for me, being a philanthropy uh, to that's more important than me. Helping kids with education, you know, knowing that education changed and saved my life. So hopefully that I could give that back to the next generation. One of the people that he looks up to is Bill Gates. He said, because Bill Gates gives back. And I think that's, that's a good attribute to have is to give back to your community. It's good to make money. It's good to become rich, good to become wealthy. But what are you doing with that money? Are you using it as a tool? Are you using it to, to touch the next generation? Are you using it to effectively elevate and educate your community. So I do appreciate that word as well. He also said something that stuck out to me as well, is he said he talks to people that have money and you know he, 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 he basically made a statement about, you can't take that money with you. Well, there's a verse in the Bible, Ecclesiastes that actually talks about that as well, where it says, coming to the realization that life is more about objects and more about material things, that all that stuff will disappear in a, in a, in a whisper, in a, in a second, in a millisecond. But what is 
there to benefit from after all it's said and done and everything else disappears, what does your life have to show for it? What's on the other end of that? Scripture in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 5.10 says this, whoever loves money ha never has enough of it, and whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless, and this just goes further along with the idea that you know, it's good to create wealth. It's good to make money. It's good to become rich. But what are you doing with it? What's the lasting impact that you're going to have on somebody else's life once all that money goes away? I keep telling people knowledge is more important than money. So take take that knowledge and get out there and go and make it happen. That's good. Take so he says knowledge is more important than money. I'll go further and say knowledge plus action is power because the old saying knowledge is power isn't always true. Knowledge is useless if you don't use that knowledge to go out and actually do something. I feel like my purpose is to educate the next generation and show them what I've been through. Even you look at a lot of the athletes, I tell people all the time, a lot of the athletes, they don't understand financial literacy, but they understand sports. They could throw a football, they could run fast, but they don't know nothing about their money. So I'm saying the financial advisors that's how they get taken advantage of because they put a lot of energy and effort into their talent. But nobody really wow. put that back into learning economics, learning banking, saying that I'm going to make millions of dollars. So I need to know these things for myself. That is so, so important when it comes to learning money, learning how money works and how money grows and learning the money game, right? Because you could be full of talent. You can make millions of dollars, but we see it every single day in the entertainment industry. We see it in the sports and athletic industry. These young guys out of high school, out of college are making millions millions and then the next year they squander it down to down to zero. Uh, we, we recently did a, uh, a reaction video with Waka Flocka and some of his response to financial literacy as well. And he made some really, really good points uh, in that latest video that we put on there as well. You can go ahead and check that out. should be a link over here somewhere. but these these gentlemen that are now, Maybe they didn't know it back then when they were younger, but because of everything that they've gone through and what they've seen the world actually go through, they're actually empowering these young guys now. They're empowering the next generation to you know, maybe start to make some different decisions that they had made prior. And it's uh it's that old, it's kind of like that old thing with parents, right? You know, when you're young and your parents you know, it try to instruct you. You're not, you're going to take it for granted. You're not going to take it for what it's worth. But when you're older, you're, you're going to realize how smart and how uh, intelligent and how, how much wisdom your parents actually did have. And you're going to kick yourself for not listening to that wisdom way back then. I, I consider myself as a marketing genius. So I want to cross promote everything that I have. And uh, I feel like I could sell other products. I could sell a product and I tell my son, I say, you know what, doing the right thing, you will be around a long time. Doing the wrong thing, you won't. And so that's been the key to our success, saying that if we cross promote, we can uh, open up opportunities for so many different people. Mm -hmm. Invest in yourself. I tell people, that's what I did. I, I found people that were smarter than me. You always want people smarter on your team. So I think that surround yourself around those type of people and knowledge is money and, and realize we can't take it with us. Awesome. Well, as you can see, uh, Masterpiece definitely has a lot of wisdom now, um, and uh, you know he's he's dedicated to teaching and educating the next generation. He has some master class events coming up. You can go ahead and Google that and check out that information. Remember the thing we always say on this channel: the things that will help you level up in life are going to be three areas. It's going to be the books you read, the people you surround yourself with, and the events that you attend. And until the next video. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you live loud, laugh louder, and learn to be a better you. We'll see you in the next video. God bless.